Power Five teams had some fun this weekend. There were some major upsets and implosions. That's this week on The Tailgate. Welcome to this week's Tailgate. I, my name is Michael. I'm joined here tonight by my hosts, Luke and Dennis. How you doing? I'm Luke. You can follow me right what? here at LBW Tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis. You can follow me out here oh, oh my on Twitter. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to make it a nightmare for the editor after this. Uh, That's well, their problem in life. <laughs> So before we get into tonight, uh, because we got some awesome things to recap, uh, we uh, just want to do a shout out really quick to our our sponsor tonight, which is Explore Tours. Explore Tours is a tour company based here in Middle Tennessee. So if you're looking for any kind of uh, educational tour just or just an experience tour where you're trying to learn more about Middle Tennessee, if you're visiting or if you live here, then check it out at ExploreTours.com. Thanks. All right. So... We got some upsets this week. Ooh, we oh. do. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, we we were we were sixty six percent right for yeah, our upsets yeah, this week. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say who was wrong, but you know, listen, like they know shiny. anybody <laughs> knew, like yeah, hundred percent. Luke was wrong. It's okay. <laughs> I'm married. I know about being wrong. That's we're fair. good here. Um, but no, yeah, South Carolina, you know, we talked last time, Yep. South Carolina, they had some really, really big wins and mm-hmm. they had some really, really big losses and I just chose them on the wrong week. Yeah. So they, that loss they, was, they, I mean, they, the first half, they looked so good and it's just like their, their offensive line just gave up. It was <sighs> the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was, it was, yeah, I don't I even felt get so it. so bad for Rattler. I mean, yeah. it went downhill quickly. I'm it surprised did. he didn't score at all. Like, I had to go back to watch the game. I'm like, mm-hmm. did he really not score? And I was like, yeah, he really he did it. No, I was surprised. Yeah, it, w- it was rough. It was rough. And that's what happens. And uh, so I am 0 and 1 on my upsets to start the week. And hey, that's fine. I mean, what to expect out of an OSU Everybody fan. likes a good comeback story, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go into that. Moving joke. on, um, Kim Kardashian. I, well, I will. Here's the other thing I'll say: is one of the other things that it showed is North Carolina has an incredibly improved defensive structure. Yeah. Like they they really did improve from last year. Because if it was the same defense as last year, South Carolina would have been throwing all over them. Yeah, it would have been oh, a lot horrible. closer, a much closer game. It, it honestly could have been a. It honestly could have been a blowout mm-hmm. if if South Carolina had hit their stride properly and had a better yeah. offensive line. True. No, I agree with that. Yeah. So, but, uh, but on to the happy moments. Yeah. Let's go on to the happy moments. So, uh, so, I uh, Dennis, uh, you, you seem to, you seem to kind of hit the nail on the head a little bit, uh, this past week with your, your upset alert, probably the biggest yeah. win of the, uh, biggest win of the week. You know, the one that everybody's talking about. As you guys should already know, like, I'm going to be right. You know, I'm like, I'm like coach prime. I, I keep receipts on people who, who just don't believe in me. Yeah. So like <laughs> I keep receipts and just like I said. They're going to win because the coach prime, what kind of coach he is, the momentum he has, and all the hype that was going with him, you just cannot say. But the, the game, honestly, was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It was a high-scoring game, but it, it was everything I feel like you could want. Oh, yeah. I had to go back and watch the highlights a couple different times because we, we were, Dennis and I, we, we were at the, the UT game, so we didn't get to watch it live. So, But I was going back and watching these the highlights. Man, that they had some insane players, some insane plays. 100%. And I mean, his son just hitting hitting some dimes. Yeah, he was like, a setting school for forty seven. Setting school records his first time. I mean, it yeah. it it almost like when you watched it, you didn't think it was going to be an upset because of what looked to be such a disparity mm-hmm. of talent the opposite way. You yep. expected TCU to come out and just show their you know showcase the talent you know that like they we, have. We know they lost some players from right. last year, but we didn't think it was yeah. going to be that, this yeah, this kind of game. Uh, you would think that they were going to come back and go, hey, you know what? We're not going to be stepping back. Right. We're gonna we're Mind still going to be vying for Chandler the Morris was their choice of quarterback last year. Yeah. So it's just surprising to see like how it just didn't work out. Yeah. yeah. Or it's not working out. No, uh, totally. And uh, which I guess leads us into our final uh, upset for. Woo-hoo. Man, I think we're all happy about this one. Uh, Duke beaten up on Clemson. Um, well, if you looked at the score, it would look like it was beating up. Yeah. But Clemson really kind of shot themselves in the foot a lot oh, yeah. last night. And uh, and it was just one of those things like you like Duke just 
capitalized on it every single time. They every didn't. Time. They tried not to lose momentum. They did their best to like even when they made fumbles or even when they made just dumb decisions. The punt. Oh, oh man, the muff punt. punt. Yeah. Man, that that that. Or as Dennis would like to say, the muffled punt. The muffled punt. Uh, the muffled English punt. Language. Language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, pig Latin's being the first. Um. <laughs> and and the thing the thing that was crazy to me is like everybody's gonna look at the scoreboard and say, yep. twenty eight to seven. Oh man, they got blown out. This game was you know on it was not as is not as a big deficit as it no. looked. You know, you yeah. look at Clemson, they have two blocked field goals and yep. then they have two turnovers in the red zone, which I mean, doesn't happen very that, often, especially with Dabo. Like yeah. he looked confused. He looked like he didn't know what to do. Yeah. And it just kind of was one of those, like what is going on moments for yeah. him. And Duke's crowd was in it. I mean, oh, it was yeah, an they exciting were there. fun game to watch. Well, and I could tell that there's, there's some kind of, something going on between club Nick and Dabo. Like mm-hmm. uh, after that second fumble in, in the red zone, uh, you saw Dabo like, like try to like, like high five or whatever, you know, club Nick as he's yeah. coming off, coming off the field and club Nick just breezes right past him. Doesn't even acknowledge him. Yeah. I'm like, you don't do that to your head coach. So it's just like, there's, there's gotta be, I could get, he's frustrated. I get, he's frustrated with himself mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But like, you got to be a better team player than that. Like you got, you got to understand, Definitely. you know, and so there's, there's something, there's a weird chemistry thing going on there. And it literally just could be like, they just oh. got into it right before the game or something. Yeah, chemistry or maybe a little bit of immaturity. True. I mean, yeah. like, you know, that's something that, that you see players, immature players that can't shake off their mistakes True. Do, yeah. where it's like all of a sudden stuff's going yeah. wrong and they kind of take it out on everybody else and go, I'm, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Yeah. And, you know, especially as a quarterback for a school like Clemson, you can't do that. You yeah. have to be the one to really rally your troops to say, hey, that's on me, boys. Let's go. Yeah. So. Well, and so it's just it's one of those things like I like and I mentioned this in the chat uh, with you guys last night while we were watching the game. I was like, you know, you know, I, like I am really tired of hearing about how amazing Club Nick is. Because that's one of the things that I kept on hearing before the Orange Bowl. It's like it's something I heard during the off season. Like he's just gonna be amazing. He's gonna just uh, like really adopt this like Garrett Riley super fast, you know, temp- up tempo offense. Mm-hmm. He's gonna do it so well and stuff like that. And I'm like, maybe he's just one of those five stars. That's really not. A, he's not really a five star. He's more like a three star. Like and coming out of a Texas system, you would think that that wouldn't be the case, but it's very possible that he just really was overrated because he yeah. has in two major games because the, the orange bowl was a huge game. Yep. He looked very non-composed. He consistently scrambled. He consistently lost his composure against one of the worst defenses in, th- in a power five out of a power yeah. five team. Yeah. And they made him look silly. And then you had Duke last night who looked actually very poised as a, as they a power did. five defense. They they Their really made it was amazing. They like, yeah. they did their job very well. They made him look foolish. Yeah. And and so that's that's my thing with with him is I'm like I'm like maybe he just isn't as good. He's and he's just used to being built up. Mm-hmm. Whereas you got Leonard on Duke's side who literally he wears that bracelet that yeah. says you suck. Yeah. Like, he has actually his mom call him or text him before every single game yeah. to remind him to keep himself humble. Yeah. yeah. And so maybe maybe that's what Club Nick needs. He needs a little bit of hum- humility right. yeah. just to just to get get back down to earth and go, "You know what? I have the guns to be good, right. but I need to let people make me good like because yeah. i i'm just i'm not there yet i don't have that yeah. raw talent i'm not I mean, you're a sophomore even if you're a five-star talent mm-hmm. you're not going to get there right off the bat yep exactly well I, and so just looking at the score for the duke clemson game it would look like a relatively dominant performance yeah. by by duke um but as again if you watch the game you realize it really wasn't a dominant performance yeah. and but we did have this past weekend what probably turned into which what we could easily say turned into a dominant performance yes. by a team and it was probably the biggest game of the weekend mm-hmm. which was fsu lsu so um and i know some people are going to be like oh well you know lsu held in there that, that first half they were going to they were winning they went into the first it's like you have to play all four quarters yeah and then on top of that it's all about how you guys rebound from the adversity and fsu did that well, and the, the big thing for me is when you start looking at it, <clears throat> this this was a dominating performance in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, but then when you look, especially in the first half, FSU had some major discipline issues. 
Yeah, they, had they some did. Huge drops where receivers just like bad all of a penalties. Sudden, bad penalties. So you look at that and you go, man, for what the score ended up being, how much worse could it have been had FSU if, if, actually mm-hmm. maintained their composure, caught the ball in some of these wide open situations, not had some of these penalties? Yep. Um, I mean, and then you look at LSU, which not scoring from the one yard line on five attempts in two yeah. separate drives. Like if this was the nineties, you better be able to get a yard. Yeah. Like, cause it's all ground and pound. And, all it is yeah. is ground and pound. And especially now with these guys jumping over the lines, like yep. to not be able to get one yard on uh-huh. five attempts. Come on, LSU. You got to do better than that. Well, yeah. And, and then so that's why, like, that's why I, I think it becomes our dominant pick for the weekend mm-hmm. is because of the fact that literally FSU just shut LSU down 100%. and they made the adjustments that they needed to make. And it re- was reminiscent to me of the Georgia UT game last year where the score doesn't reflect domination 27 to 13 right. doesn't reflect domination. But if you watch that game, you go, nope, nope. Georgia was dominant. Yeah. They didn't score a bunch which was weird, but they didn't score a yeah. bunch because they felt like they didn't need to. Right. Whereas FSU, they just they ended up just running up scores kind of to some degree towards the end of the game because they wanted to. Right. They wanted to show like, hey, we actually should have had this score or this score or this yeah. score. Right. So, no, I mean, FSU is going to be on the biggest stage that they're going to have basically early on, especially early on in the season. Mm-hmm. And they're going to play a different conference team, which everyone sees SEC as being probably the most powerful or if not easily the top two powerful uh, conferences in, like in football. Yeah. So to be able to kind of prove a point to not only a SEC team, a top 10 team mm-hmm. where a lot of people had them as a favorite to, to win the SEC or possibly even go make it to the college football playoffs. Right. So for, for Florida state, it was just like, no, we're here. We're for real. Like you got, you definitely can't look overlook us. Right. Yep. Yep. So, um, but we, uh, you know, we didn't just have dominant performances last week. This, this we past had some weekend. implosions. We did. I mean, this a couple of these games that 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 I watched. Um, one of them was the Georgia Tech Louisville game. Oh yeah. So so first of all, you've got to give Jeff Brom a lot of credit mm-hmm. in this Louisville squad. Dennis, I know when we talked about our, our rankings, mm-hmm. you were pretty high on Louisville. I guess yes. I don't like giving you all this credit, but I mean Colorado, Louisville, man. You're you're really on fire, and uh, you're Ohio State fan, and I, I can see you kind of already struggling. So again, I think I've said it before. I'm not smart, but I can lift everything. Um, so, but give Jeff Brom a lot of a credit. Um, there was lots of emotional up and downs, especially in that mm-hmm. first half. He maintained maintained his composure, and I think that really translated well to his players coming out at half. Uh, the other thing is, is that they that they made those adjustments. You know, yeah. we talked so many times about the adjustments made. Mm-hmm. Um, they really, in that second quarter, when Georgia Tech scored 28, they were really yeah. man heavy, uh, playing a lot of man. And when you saw them come out in that second, in the second half, they started kind of playing a lot more zone. They were yep. a little more zone heavy. But you see Georgia Tech up 28 to 13 going into to halftime. Mm-hmm. All the momentum. Cardinals with a, it looks like 808 to go, go up 29 to 28. Um, Georgia Tech then kind of responds pretty well, goes on this drive, uh, get down to the 16, but then Haynes King drops back, Haynes King drops back to pass and fumbles after being sacked. Hmm. The very next play, and I'm going to get this dude's name wrong, uh, Louisville Jahar Jordan, Jal Har Jordan. He I'm gets not loose. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not yeah. sure either. Uh, but he gets a 74, 74 yard, uh, touchdown yeah. and then they get a field goal with 237 to kind of put them back on top mm-hmm. but when you look at georgia tech blowing this 15 point halftime lead mm-hmm. it's just like what did you do yeah you didn't make any adjustments nope. um they got comfortable kind of and then and then good on louisville they look really impressive yeah they made again it goes back to that fsu thing they made the adjustments like fsu did yep. just to come back and and win that um it's all about coaching right there it's 100 percent and coaching. And, and, and building into your, into your kids, like, Hey, you've got to have the resilience to get back up. And even if you gotten punched, even if you slipped yourself and you've, you're, you're, you're the one that's caused the slip up, don't get down on yourself, get up and move. Oh, um, go, go back to that good old yep. Rocky quote. It's not about how hard you can hit. 
It's about how hard you can get hit and keep coming. Yep, exactly. Right? So Unless it's Tyson, then you stay down. <laughs> if it's exactly. Tyson, you cover your ears and you duck. <laughs> so, but Very true. To me, the biggest implosion uh, was was Nebraska against Minnesota. That was a nail biter. Now, he, here's the thing: I love defense. Yeah. And if it was you a like defensive defense, game. this was the game for you. Yeah. Um, at least until the last three minutes. Yep. Um, so with two and a half minutes to go, uh, Minnesota receiver Daniel Jackson had one of the best catches of the the weekend or the week. Um, but he catches this touchdown, um, stays in bounds, ties it at ten. Okay. The Nebraska quarterback, Jeff Sims, then throws an interception, which is returned to about the 50, somewhere yep. in there. And then with the clock running down, they kick a field goal to win the game. Yep, Minnesota. And you look at yep. Nebraska, and you just go, man, you played good defense all game. Except for the last three minutes. Except for the last three minutes. And yep. you didn't score enough to kind of take that, that time off at the end. Um, so to me, that's kind of my yeah. biggest implosion. You're defensive game you've been both teams have been playing great you got to keep playing you so, got to play to the end so what do you think about like matt rules de- debut like do you are you are you still on kind of his hype train a little bit or you I, what are you thinking the the the, the jury's out on yeah, that one fair enough i think i think that matt rule the organization yeah. uh is going to be a good organization for him i think he's a good coach mm-hmm. um you know the way that he lost i think kind of makes me go again we're talking a lot about coaching here right yep. yeah that kind of makes me go, what are you, what's going on on the sidelines when this is happening? You know, what, how are you preparing mm-hmm. your kids? Are the, are your kids getting resilient? Are they, you know, getting lackadaisical? What's going on? So I think that, that, you know, this coming week is going to be an interesting week for them. Mm-hmm. Um, they, Nebraska, I don't think is going to be the best team in the big yeah. 10, but we'll just have to see. No, I mean, if Nebraska can lose off just the really short momentum, like just the last two minutes, they're going to be in a rude awakening uh, mm-hmm. for next week with the whole team calling out. Just, that's exactly what they are, just momentum. Right. And I feel like with the Nebraska game, the momentum part is really when the Minnesota catch. Yes. That touchdown, like that was everything. I believe it, it was, uh, I have it here, Minnesota, Daniel Jackson. Yeah. And I, I, I believe it, it was not only his first touchdown, but it possibly his first catch of his career. So you know that time Which, shift, like everything was for Minnesota was just perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, and he, that that was, that was a great catch. I mean, the yeah. fact that he knew to drag his foot the way he did, right. it's like a pro pro catch. Oh, it was pro catch. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, the interesting thing to me is, is again, going back to Ohio state, yeah. everybody talks about Marvin Harrison and how yeah. he's able to control his body and get his toes down and kind of maneuver his mm-hmm. legs while he's in the air. And this kid did a great job of stretching one leg. I mean, I'm, I'm like, yeah pretending to do it down <laughs> yeah. here. there's no way it's going to happen but um but trust he, me guys you know, under this table he's doing he, it i'm splits, yeah. he's, splits he's trying right <laughs> but you know his back leg is stretched out this way and his front leg's out this way and he's keeping his front leg up yeah he's pulling his toe down to drag it while making the catch yeah. yep. like maybe the fsu receivers from the first half should kind of take a lesson there exactly about how to how to make a catch <laughs> yeah. um but yeah i mean it was just an amazing catch yeah so another really good one was the Michigan State? I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one-handed so over good. his head. I saw the highlights of that one, Dan. Yeah, that that was a pretty pretty cool one. Oh yeah, that was excellent. My my favorite catch of this weekend though doesn't come from it. it well, it, I guess he is an offensive player, <laughs> but he wasn't playing offense this at the time, at, at the time when he. And, and granted, well, he I mean, made some he made some sick catches on yeah, offense mm-hmm. that this game. But personally, it was just the beautiful dive and snag in the air that Travis Hunter did to as an interception against TCU. Mm -hmm. Like that was you're they're on almost the goal line. Mm -hmm. He just, he reads it perfectly. Mm -hmm. He jumps right in front of the receiver and snags it. And I'm like, that's the type of stuff you want to see defenders do all the time. And it was just, he sacrificed himself for that game all game long, and right. it was impressive. Well, the, you, he, I think he played all the snaps. He played like, uh, yeah, like 100, or something yeah, like something that. crazy. It's ridiculous. So the fact that he's able to kind of like play on both sides of the ball and literally just instead of like watching plays, be able to like view plays and then be able to come into your next series, mm-hmm. he made adjustments immediately and was fly. able to recognize. Yep. Yep. So it's like that says something of the quality player that he is. Well, and I remember watching the highlight and seeing the pass and mm-hmm. just thinking, man, that guy's wide open. Yeah. And then as the pass is thrown, you see this like blur. I mean, yeah, come through in like, like prime speed, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it was amazing because <laughs> I think like ninety nine out of a hundred times, 
that is a touchdown. Yes. The other time is like the guy doesn't catch the ball. Yep. So this is just like, I mean, it was just a once in a lifetime snag. That's what yeah. it was. I mean, he <laughs> just straight up snagged it. And that, it was just, it's that stuff like that. As, as someone that used to play as a linebacker, like I, I love that type of play. Cause mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. it just, it, it, it was reminiscent of what I wanted to be. I never was, <laughs> but it's something I really wanted to be. I was a lot younger. I that's couldn't what, do that's that. That's what Michael dreamed mm. about. It I, I just <laughs> dreamed of being that guy on the goal line would just snag an interception. Uh, but anyways, I mean those, so those would be some of our best catches for sure for this, from this weekend, but there were some, uh, we got to go to the worst calls. We so got to, yeah. yeah. Going to take the mic back here. Go for it. Um, so with officiating. Yep. I saw somebody tweet this and I thought it was really funny that the ACC officials are hearing all the out outcries and the, the, the anger about yep. these games shortening Yep, and they're doing their best to, to stretch them out some with their targeting calls Yeah, and the reviews of targeting. That's calls. the gritty football that we oh, all yeah. want to watch. Exactly. Yes. You know, yeah. we, we're, we're paying to see the refs. Yeah. We want to see them in a monitor you know, with it going super slow so they can like yeah. nitpick everything. Team zebra. Woo. But let's go back to that Louisville quarter, oh, man. cornerback, yes. right? So the first thing is that there were two yeah. targeting reviews. So on one drive. Yep. So in one drive, the ref mm-hmm. stopped twice to look for targeting. So this target, the first one, I mean, they said it wasn't, they moved on. Yep. Personally, I thought the first one was almost worse than the second one. Yep. Um, but then you go back and you see it's it's a glancing blow. The quarterback it, the quarterback started his slide right at the same time. Mm-hmm. The the defensive back started his tackle. It was with his you know with his shoulder. There's a lot of it. It just was horrible. Yeah. And the ACC their officials I don't understand. I mean, why are they calling targeting so yeah. much more than everybody else? Well, I mean, they did it in Clemson and Duke. They cl- did it in Clemson. You know what? I think it's probably because of the new teams coming in next year. They, they need that money. Those extra commercials definitely come in handy. No, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that extra time, yeah. That's, that's going to raise their Cal, profits. Stanford, SMU coming in, you know, some mm-hmm. big name schools. You know? That's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So, I mean, it just, it, it's, it just takes away from the game. And yeah. I think, I think that we can all agree the spirit of the targeting rule is good. We want to, yeah. we want to oh, yeah. protect players. We want to make sure, especially quarterbacks who are kind of the, the namesakes, they're the, the, the ones that are going to make the, the biggest moves. We yep. want to protect them. However, the expectation that the defense is the only people who are yep. taking care of that is ridiculous. And at some point we have to make, I mean, again, I don't know anything about the rules, but at some point they have to make it so that, hey, if you're not going to start your slide mm-hmm. early, well, then they're going to hit you. Yep. It's up to you as a quarterback or running back or receiver to – protect yourself it goes back to yeah. Oh, yeah. back in the day if a if a quarterback threw a high ball mm-hmm. and the receiver got laid out they didn't blame the defensive back or the linebacker for hitting that receiver they blamed yeah. the quarterback for throwing a high ball yep that that's kind of my shows my age a little bit <laughs> but that's where i'm at so that that was my worst mm-hmm. officiating call any no i mean i yeah. i agree with you i th- i think i think all the targeting calls that i saw this weekend were kind of suspect um they were just like they were uh, could they be argued that they're targeting? Sure, you could. I mean, that's probably why they call them. But it's yeah. just one of those things. Like when you're, especially when you're dealing with a quarterback slide situation, if the slide and the lunge from the defensive player are happening almost at the exact same time, how much do you expect the the defensive player who is not connected to the ground anymore, right? Like to adjust themselves. I mean, like it's, it's the way they gotta treat the like ref and the passer when they put all those extra right. rules. It's like you ha- the the refs have to see more about basically the, like is the person like running full speed. There's nothing they can do in target. Like you can't say like hey it's it's targeting hit. And then what I hate most is like especially when they slide and everything like that. Mm-hmm. The player's not expecting them to slide. So all of a sudden the, the quarterback tucks his head or anything like that. The defensive player's like. I can't twist my neck 90 I, degrees. I yeah. Like my helmet's def- already moving. I'm already I can't in air. I the laws <laughs> like, of physics here. Like, yeah. like, I think I've only ever seen one guy, instead of hitting the person that, that the QB that slid, mm-hmm. he literally ended up just like, he like was able to somewhat adjust his body and just kind of somersault over the person. Yeah. But I've only, I think I've ever seen that once. Well, and I think that was in the pros. But then when's that going to happen when a defensive player gets hurt? Yeah. Because you know, he's like, somersaulting. Because he's trying to protect the quarterback. Yeah. So he's, 
you know, yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's, you know, and, and so it's just, there's, there's a point where you just have to let them play. Like, again, I agree. I agree that you have to protect the, or you want to protect the, the QB, but you can't do it at the, at the cost of the other players too. Right. Um, cause it's that, that's the safety thing there as well, but we can't just talk about the officiating. We no, we can't worst calls. Yeah. There's coaches, coach, make some coaches pretty, make some pretty bad calls, interesting too. calls. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that as a coach, I really think that you have to have, right. You have to have some, some management. You have to have, you know, a little bit of that, like secretary, you know, you know, what's going on, yep. you know, who's going where and what's yep. going when and all that kind of stuff. So when two players who are wearing the same number <laughs> end up on the field at the same time, some might call that a blunder. I call that blame the coach. Oh yeah. That's a bad coaching. Call. Oh yeah. Like that's, that is one of your responsibilities is to make sure that your two number threes don't end up on the field at the same time. Maybe he just thought and 33, you know, like, <laughs> like oh, look, yeah, yeah. we're just going to put them together. They're going to yeah. be Siamese. They're going to, they're going to like, what is They'll it split. called? Yeah. Yeah. Siamese when twins. Tie, when you tie yeah. your legs together and you do like uh, a sack race yeah. or what <laughs> a three-legged race. So, but, but that play, I think they went from punting. Mm-hmm. So the Utah was punting. Yep. And then all of a sudden they've got like, a first down and then a 27 yard touchdown two plays later. Yep. So, so oh, there was my, <coughs> <laughs> Um, but How yeah, so are that's, you again? Yeah. <laughs> 13, three. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my coaching blunder of the, yeah, week. well, I mean, and, it's bad. And no, it is bad. I mean, literally I was listening to, uh, one of the Florida, Florida pundits who just, you know, they, they have their own, um, and I'm, their, her name escapes, escapes me for right now, but she, uh, she's got a lot of connections at Florida. And so she covers Florida football on the daily basically. Uh, but one of the things that she said was, uh, uh, and, and for the, for the record, I'm going to have her information like in the video. So you can just, I'm not going to just forget her and just not, not actually call her out. I just Someone literally can't here. remember. <laughs> um, but basically one of the things that she said, she goes, that's a fireable offense. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But like, she's like, I'm not mm-hmm. saying Billy Napier needs to be fired, but whoever's responsible for getting the, the players on the field, they need to be fired. Yeah. Like, cause that's like, that's it. That is a game shifting, like momentum shifting. Cause I, I, I was watching it. And I was like, I was like, man, okay. The four is going to get the ball back. They might be able to do something. Something, and then oh that's a penalty that doesn't ever happen and <laughs> uh, oh that's Utah's like got the, targeting yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like targeting that happens like once every Everybody's single game yeah uh, but I, I I was like I was like oh well now Utah's oh look at them they they just scored okay yeah. cool so this, yep. the game is now completely out of Florida's hands they like and like while I give some credit to Florida they didn't give up they they played they they played all four quarters the team played all four quarters but it was clear that their coaching staff gave up before the, the before the coin toss. Right. So and and so like, but I think there's also some things in well, the culture there too. That well, and the the culture, and I I think that Florida, and this perfectly leads into yep. my next point about Florida. Florida has this mentality that they are, they are the old Florida. Yeah. They are they are the perennial Steve Spurrier. Steve Urban Spurrier. Meyer. Spurrier. Yeah. Urban. Thank you. You don't you notice. Know, no, you're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like back when they had all the criminals on their team. Um, but that's, they, they think that they're a lot better than what they really are. I think their expectations for themselves are very, very high. Mm. And I don't know where they should be. And I think that's even more shown by, oh, what was this guy's name? Princely something. Princely um, Umanum. I can't pronounce his name. His name is Princely. But yeah. so, so. <laughs> He really ate his words. Oh, He's yeah. one of two guys that ate his words that I'm going to call out here today. So, but if, if you didn't see this, before the game, he posted a, a TikTok, mm-hmm. uh, and it showed a picture of Utah Stadium, and it said little A-H, which I'm assuming stands for, you know, another word for a donkey, um, little ass stadium, right? He shortly deleted that, but Utah's first possession, they went for a 70-yard passing touchdown, and... I think they're, they're, the stadium's called Rice Eccles Stadium. Yep. Yeah. It just oh, exploded, right? Yeah. And I think it proved a little bit that size doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Maybe. It's all about right? how you use it. Right? So, of course. But it, that it really got the crowd into the game. And then the thing, the, the thing that's really interesting about Mr. Princely mm-hmm. is that he started this game as one of their starting defensive line, I believe. Mm-hmm. And when you look at his stat sheet, which I think we're going to have – go here 
Sure. Um, <laughs> we're really making it hard for you. <laughs> yeah, but it's make it hard for that editor. When you when you look at his stat line, yeah, he had a quarterback hit. So not only are you going to call a team out, yeah, you're going to get killed by that team, and you're not going to do anything to try to help to your tr- team to, to help yeah. your team. So that was my first uh, eat your words moment. Oh yeah. Um, my second eat your words moment actually comes from Miami. Oh. Miami of Ohio. Oh, not that. Okay. Not, oh. not that Miami. I was like, no, not, we're no not beaches, staying in Florida. No sun. Oh. Right. Yeah. No beaches, no sun. It's uh, up in the, the snow, you know, cold Ohio. Oh, yeah. Sorry for anybody who lives in Ohio. Yeah, I know. It's a horrible place. Fans of anybody that's right. fans of any team out there. But their quarterback, Gabbert, um, in an interview had said something about, we're going to show those hurricanes who the real Miami is. Yeah. Cool. You're confident. I like it. Um, you forgot to, you had to play the game. Yeah. They ended up losing 38 to three. And then they showed them. Yeah. Oh, they, sh- oh, they, they did show them who the real Miami was. Yeah. And it's the South of Florida. <laughs> yeah. It's the one that's in Florida, but he completed 13 for 24, 164 yards. They got nine first downs. He had no touchdowns and he had a uh, quarterback rating of 38.2, which I thought was really funny considering, uh, his quarterback rating and Miami's yeah. score. I think about the same. Exams, like yeah, basically percentage. the exact right. same. <laughs> so <laughs> too funny. Like, like there you go. You showed them. Yeah. But, so so those were my two eat eat your words uh, candidates for the for today. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, you know, leading off that, I'm gonna eat my words because the fact that I really thought LSU was actually gonna win. So this mm-hmm. kind of leads to what I'm about to say with the biggest hit, and I hate to say it. So kind of before I say, I do want to give credit to Joe Milton though. Like that, the stiff arm. Mm-hmm. was actually something I really considered as a big hit. But don't get me wrong. Virginia had no way of actually winning that game, so right. there's no momentum shift there. No. But it was definitely yeah. something nice to see that Joe Millen can but, do. Uh, it, you got a 6'5 QB that just stiff arms a guy and then still gets four additional yards. I was a little no. disappointed because they said he could throw 90 yards, and I think the DB only went back like two. Right. <laughs> so I was, I was like, come on, man. What are you going to do here? <laughs> but honestly, though, the person, I feel like the, the, the biggest hit – I feel like it was awarded to LSU Daniels, like Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact that, like, yes, the game was like 7-7, I believe, during, during that time. But you can slowly see kind of LSU just slowly dwindling, like, either their 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 talent pool wasn't deep enough, which I, surprisingly I thought was going to be Florida State, mm-hmm. to be honest. But it just so you, you see that kind of trajectory, like a 7-7, I believe it was like uh, what, 10 or like 14 after uh, at that, like in the second quarter. And mm-hmm. then – it just kept dropping. Yeah. And so I feel like it was kind of like, hey, we're going to start putting place in the nail. And then slowly you're just going to get end up being just SOL. Like, yeah. So that hit literally set the momentum of everything. If well, you guys look he, at it. He learned real massive. quick. He learned real quick why you don't hop over people. Right. It's, it's different. You know, the linemen are different from the Pac-12 to the SEC. They're, they're a little bigger. I, they're I a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> they move a little quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just the big. It's the... It's a 320 pound man that can still run a four six. I mean, yeah. it's like these it's a guys. Scary. Are, yeah, it's it's <laughs> these guys are like dunking yeah. during their off time. So yeah, that's oh, yeah. These are these these guys are different. Oh yeah. Uh, well, and and then you've got on the other side of that, you've got other guys that are the same size that are just as fast, if not faster, that are deliberately running against you, just mm-hmm. trying to smack you in the face. So he gave them an open window to just push him back and hit him and stop him. And, 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 and in, which I think it ended up rattling him. Like I actually yeah. had him as a, a person who was a, like a Heisman uh, contender. Yeah, same here. And I'm disappointed because like the first pro team, that's like if you even have a great season the rest of the year, that's that game is going to be mentioned like, yeah, you didn't do anything here. Yeah. Right? I, you're really worthy. <laughs> yeah. And like, and I can see, I can see more now why people are high on Jordan Travis. Like I really mm-hmm. do see, I can see some more of that like Heisman contender kind of conversation. I still think it's way too early to consider him. Uh, Cause there was a lot of, there were a lot of still mistakes that he made um, that you didn't even see like Caleb Williams make or anything yeah. like that. Caleb Williams still stayed relatively composed and he just has some raw talent. That's really hard to overcome. Right. And, you know, as, as a, as a different, as a different quarterback or whatever. And so it's just like it, Jordan, Jordan Travis, if he plays like he played against LSU against every other team mm-hmm. this year, easily he's going to be in the conversation. I don't, I don't know if he's going to win because he still has to deal with Caleb Williams. But right. And Travis Hunter. 
Just which is very <laughs> possible, <laughs> right? I, yeah. Like he's two-way yeah. player. <laughs> he's a two-way player yeah. that that actually puts up stats because yes. that's the big thing. Like a, a lot of two-way players mm-hmm. don't usually put up great stats because they're playing so many snaps. Right. So, um, but that but uh, how, how long can he do that for? The season. We're about to find That's out. That's true. First, first game. I mean, great. You, you, you're, you're good. But well, and yeah. and and at, like they're they're playing, and we're, we're about to hit that. We'll we'll hit that a little bit later. Um, but they're they're going to be playing up against Nebraska, so they're going to actually have a an opponent that actually has a decent defense. So it's yep. going to be interesting to see how that how that plays out. Yep. Um, but before we get there, we're going to look at some upsets. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So, so um, uh, we we decided to only go with two this week. Yep. I, I you know I I think it's just because someone let us down. I'm just yeah. I got, I got I got ruled out of this. <laughs> one. Got ruled out. Being no longer matters is wrong. It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, uh, you know, we're actually not going to put in our upset alerts this week. We we talked about it. We're not going to put things like Texas and Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um. That that just it just doesn't make any sense. Um. Mm-hmm. Considering the fact that they're two top ten teams are. I guess Texas isn't technically top ten, even They're though they should 11. be. They should be. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you, if you lose two top ten teams, those guys should be up, and they should be swapped yes. with Notre mm-hmm. Dame. Um, Notre Dame only beat two D two schools. They they don't deserve to be there. But they're loved. They show so much talent. They're, They're the Fighting Irish. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, um, but I just see little leprechauns. Yeah, little They're leprechauns all over. <laughs> <laughs> just running around with a bunch of you know golden pots. Um, the uh, and uh, it's just so we're, we're not gonna we're not we're not gonna go after that one only because of the fact that it's either one of them is gonna be a season defining win mm-hmm. for both teams, but it's, it's kind of like LSU uh, FSU was kind of it's, yeah. But it's, you can't really look at it. I feel like it had more meaning just because it's it's gonna be Al- Al- Alabama though. I I, and yeah. I agree with you there. Like it's, other than that, I feel like. It can go either way. I, I just I think that either way, either one of them lose, it's mm-hmm. not going to completely derail their season. No, but it's going to make it a bigger uphill battle. And right. they were already kind of the front runners of both of their conferences. True. So, um, but we're going to start off first with uh, you know since we were just talking about Notre Dame, um, I have got NC State picked to beat Notre Dame. You know, I was actually kind of favoring that one just because it's finally yeah. an actual team. An actual Power Five team. Like, they it's have an to actual play. team. Yep. Wow. So it's just like, see what they actually have to do. And I, I, I just honestly, I don't know what it is about Notre Dame. I just want them to fall. Yeah. I just don't like them. I, I, just, it doesn't, I don't. I, it doesn't click to me. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I think that there's you've got a lot more allies in this audience than than mm-hmm. I than I think you have enemies in this. Yeah. You know, right. Notre Dame fans even understand, I think, to some degree. I, well, just, I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like Yankee fans in yeah. baseball, Lakers yeah. fans, Celtics fans. I mean, it's like. You love them or you hate them. Yep. And, you know, even as True. an Ohio State fan, I mean, I kind of feel a little bit of that. I don't think to the degree that Notre Dame would have, <laughs> but it's that, you know, you either you either are our biggest fan or you want to see us lose every single game. Yeah. I want to yeah. see them lose every single game. See, like religiously, I feel like I'm, I'm messing up. It's a Catholic school. I grew up Catholic. I feel like I should be like, yeah, it's something we're doing right. You know, <laughs> like we're tackling people the same age, stuff like that. <laughs> I'm like, so I should be, a, I should be a fan of this, but it's just like I still can't, I, I still can't, uh, like I, I still can't join here. Yeah, yeah. I, I. So when I was growing up, I never understood my dad's disdain for Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, like he just, he just always just, it just clearly grinded Irish? his gears, huh? Aren't you guys Irish too? We're Scotch Irish. Um, yeah, yes, sure. Uh, but the, uh, but I, mean, I guess at, every Irish has to have some kind of drink next to him. It's true. Um, oh, I was thinking tape. Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious guys. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but essentially I uh, like as, as I've gotten older and, and, and like, I see how consistently favored they are in polls mm-hmm. when they've done nothing. How, like, I mean, they had a mediocre year last year. And they're automatically put in the yeah. top fifteen. Yeah. Like it's like you you've you added what a quarterback, but you still lost your offensive coordinator. Right. And that person went to Alabama. Like who like who are you replacing him with? Like you know, so how much uh, you've got a bunch of unknowns, just like TCU has a bunch of unknowns. So right. why in the world are they ranked higher than TCU? And so it's just like that's that was the thing that was like I'm like the first time they come against adversity, they're gonna have some problems. And and I'd love to be proved like proved wrong, but I don't see them as a college football team, like okay. like a college football playoff team. Like I, I see them as they're going to, they're they're gonna they're gonna stall out nine and three at best. Like and 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 
because they're they haven't hit their I mean, actual tough games yet. I'm just tired of it too. Like every single year, they, like the, the well, I think twice they made it to the college football playoffs and they got dominated each time. Yep. It's like mm-hmm. you obviously don't belong here. I've seen teams that are from the ACC or anything like that do much better. Yeah. What and are you doing here? <laughs> my last yeah. big gripe with them is the fact that they're not required to be a part of a conference. Yeah. Right. And I think that's where mm. to me where you see a lot of the hype at the beginning of the year is because you don't have you don't have a measuring stick for them. Yep, exactly. When you look yeah. at every other conference, it's like you talk about, okay, you got Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. Who else is going to join them or is one of yep. those teams going to fall? You've got Clemson, you know, Florida State, you know, Duke. Um, <laughs> where, Duke. Where are they going to line up? SEC, you've got like 90% of the conference that it's like, yeah. where are you going to line up? Yeah. And so with, with Notre Dame, when, they're not, when they haven't been part of a conference, it's like, well, who do you measure them against? That there's I mean, nobody. they only play, like, two good teams, like, per year, right? USC and Ohio State, right? Yeah, I mean, or, that's like what, usually. like, last year. Yeah. yeah. And so they're playing them this yeah. year in, like, two more weeks. And so it's just, yeah, we'll, we'll see. And, again, mm-hmm. you know, I'll be I'll be honest, that Notre Dame game is after Ohio State's game this year, this past week, is a little scarier to me. Um, <laughs> in, uh, I think you'll be fine. In my head, I'm going, okay, they haven't played anybody. We played Indiana. At I mean, least it's power five. It's uh, true. But, true. Yeah. but still, it's kind of that you just never know. Notre yeah. Dame kind of has that sometimes you they play. You don't know how it, good they are exactly. until they play an actual power five exactly. team. Exactly. And we're yeah. the first ones. So. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, too, with OSU and Indiana, I, was it Indiana that they played last year and that it was a close game, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, more than likely, it really could just be like, just yeah, like you have him sweating already. No, we have. He's like, I'm getting have, flashbacks. No, we have one of those games like every year. Ohio State well, has one of those like Indiana, Northwestern. Somebody's always giving them a game and you're just like, come on, just well, beat them. But, but the thing is, too, like it's that's part of the thing with rivalries. Like you've got like there, it might not be as big of a rivalry as Michigan versus Ohio state, right. but it's mm-hmm. still a rivalry enough because it's big 10 and, and clearly Indiana wants to play you guys tough. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. and and they so, did, their linebackers were amazing. It, I, number 44, I think it was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Go watch him. He was, he was, Mm-hmm. Reading plays perfectly. Yeah. It, Sorry, it's well. It, no, it's very re- reminiscent of like like UT versus Kentucky, mm-hmm. or or honestly even like Alabama versus Auburn. Like it's very much like while that's a more deep seated like rivalry kind of thing, um, it's still one of those things where one team tends to be higher up there consistently, but the other team, even if they're having a down year, they still play really tough. Right, and so it's it you know. It really could just be a psychological thing. You go into, you know, Indiana or wherever, and you're just like, oh, man, it's just, I, I just, I'm, 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 I've got all the heebie-jeebies in my head, and I don't know why I can't shake it. Um, but, like. I don't think they say heebie-jeebies. You know, they, they do not. L- listen, I have listened like to some he, Ohio he went back State to fans. the rivalry of, like, uh, like, way back when, like, any of us was born. It's like, you know, when Army and Navy were listen, relevant. I can, I can date myself, too. Uh, the uh, uh, last I checked, you don't remember the exact year. Oh man, I was wrong, but I was off by a year. I lost one. <laughs> oh, oh goodness gracious! Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go there. Um, but uh, the other upset that we got, uh, just as, as a prediction uh, for this upcoming weekend, is I've got SMU beating Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and I know that's gonna rile some feathers, especially after what Oklahoma just did to Arkansas State this past weekend. I mean, another. Small division school, a non-power. I, I, I know, another, right? Oh my goodness, seventy-three like, to zero. I mean, at least they did better. At least they I didn't scored know over. The scoreboard went that high. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, you missed out um, on an Oregon game then. Uh, <laughs> they scored eighty-one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, the uh, and so my my thing is, I think I think Oklahoma I, SMU is a great team. Yes, and they've been a good team for a long time. And so like. There's there's a reason they were being courted by the ACC. There's a right. reason they're going into the ACC. Is like while the ACC might not be as dominant of a conference as the Big Ten, Big Twelve, or the SEC, it's still trying to be one of the power of conferences. It's one of those schools that's consistently always there that you, like, you just can't overlook no matter yep. which mm-hmm. con- just because of the conference they're in. Yeah, and it, yeah, and so I I think that if if they go in, if Oklahoma goes in thinking they're just going to blow them out like they blew out, uh, was well, Arkansas State? Yeah, they're they're going to end up they're going to end up looking past this and getting blown out themselves. That's one of the hard things about in in my opinion when you win mm-hmm. that big. Yep. is this conflated sense of self. Like it could be a all, good and bad thing. It can be a yeah. good and bad thing. I think when you look at like what Colorado did, mm-hmm. 
them scoring points, that's just giving them more confidence. Yep. That's giving them when when you're an underdog and you do that, yep. that confidence. Yeah, they were builds. underdog. I think by like like not was it twenty points? It was fourteen like, or twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was something like that. Something like that. So that gives you more confidence when you're a team like Oklahoma, who also, I mean, I think Oklahoma, their fans, their school thinks a little bit higher of themselves than what they really are. And they, this kind of gives them a little too much confidence, in True. my opinion. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. you, you see a 73 to nothing, and you kind of overlook the team that had the nothing. Yeah. And you go, well, we had 73 against Arkansas State. Yeah. yeah. Like, look at that. But so we'll just see. We'll see if they, mm-hmm. if they can kind of put that in perspective or if this is going to be something that they – get a little too overconfident going into next week. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really interested to see, see how both of these games yeah. turn out. Um, again, we could be wrong, but you know, if we're, if we're right, so far, then, I'm the only one that's been wrong. Hey, listen, if we're, if we're right again, then we might start doing the betting pools. I don't know. Uh, we <laughs> just start putting some money lines on things. I'm just kidding. Uh, don't need to, don't need to open that can of worms. Um, but let's just go ahead and uh, hit each other's game of the week. So we've got, you know, each of us picked kind of a game that we're, we're really interested to see how it turns out. So go ahead, Luke, if you want to go in. Yeah. Start with yours. Well, yeah. I was going to be, um, I'm looking at, Texas at Alabama. Oh, yes. So I think that you have two schools uh, that looked pretty good, uh, did pretty good. Now, now let's realistically look at who they played. You know, Bama put up 56 on MTSU. Mm-hmm. But one of the things hey, that... they beat Miami last year. You can't sleep on them. <laughs> well, they did. And, and listen, MTSU's... I mean, we talked about this. Yep. They're a good coach team. Yeah. You know, they've had players come out. You know, they, they, they do well for what they are. Um, but what made me a little, it's like a slap in the face for what they are <laughs> for, for, what, for the conference they're in for, you know, they play hard. They do all the right things <laughs> for like what they many, are. How many, coach, <laughs> how many coach speak things can I do here? Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the thing that it, a lot of people would probably look at this and say, not a big deal. You know, you're, you're yeah. looking too hard. Three times they punted. Three times MTSU's defense held them to very few yards and yep. held them to a punt. And, you know, maybe not a three and out, but very close. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like you can do that against it. Like when you're in Alabama, you can't do that against an MTSU. Yeah. If you have some kind of sustained drive, you have, you know, a two series, you know, you know, two first downs, and then you end up punting because you dropped the ball, Wh- whatever. Yeah. That, that kind of concerned me a little bit going into a, a game against a team that's going to have a little bit better defense mm. than MTSU. I, mm. um, I really like, I was really high on uh, Quinn Air- Ewers. Quinn Ewers. 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 I just Ewers. say his name. Um, but he really looked decent. And I, I mm. mean, I really think they're going to be legit. And I think that. Really? Really? <laughs> really, really. I mean, they they were shaky at first against yeah. Rice. Like it, the, the first, were? first. Yeah, we were actually commenting that. We kept on looking at the. Like, like, oh, just on, oh. like just on my phone. I was like, let me see the score. But remember, oh, yeah. I'm an Ohio State fan who had to watch yeah. Ohio State, Indiana. So yeah. but, I know about shaky. But, but I mean, but they turned it on about midway through the second quarter and yeah. they, they got into their groove. Ewers started doing what he does Ewers. best. Right. And yeah. once they hit their groove, yeah. they did well. So I, that's to me is going to be my game of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Well, uh, mine is uh, another Texas team, um, which would be Texas A and M versus Miami, and and I never thought that I would pick Miami a Miami game to be like my game of the week, but honestly, I feel like this is more season defining potentially than yeah. Texas versus Alabama. Yeah, and the reason being is because. If Miami is able to win against Texas A&M, Texas A&M proved to be they they proved that they've got some cohesion back. Mm-hmm. They're the game that they won last last week. Mm-hmm. I mean, they again it was a cupcake school, so they they beat up on them though, and and they did it just like all the other teams that were beating up on cupcake schools did, which is good. That's what they did it. Ninety five percent. Yeah, which is true. And so, but it's like, but they at least they looked like they actually were a team that understood how to play together. Right. Because last year they didn't get that. There were a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of talent on the field that was left on the field because they just didn't know how to. There was no meshing. Um, but they seem to actually play like a team. So if Miami, who looks really good yeah, yeah. Um, in comparison, like major improvement over last year, if if they're if they're taking that sustained momentum into this game and they just come in and they kind of steamroll Texas A&M, 
or even if they don't, even if it's like a just kind of like a shootout, like a like yeah. a TCU yeah. Colorado shootout, that where it's like the last person that has the ball wins, um, yeah. then it still proves that Miami has the guns to to make it to the ACC championship. Do you think that kind of bring like the program back to like actually be competitive? I they they have the potential. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I feel like they, every year in year out they have the talent, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but just something just doesn't click for them, and I'm just like. I grew up, you guys being some of the best teams ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, co- favorite college players I've seen, uh, favorite pro players. And so, like, that's the, like, when I think of Miami, that's what I still have in my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, early 2000, well, uh, Miami is just like And I will elite. say, one of the things yeah. to me, you, the defense is what, yes. my, what always had, what, my, ugh, what Miami always had. Yep. But the other thing that they always had was a run attack. Mm-hmm. They've yep. always had great running backs. And... You know, you were saying shootout, and it was like it'd be a little bit different because Texas oh, A&M is going to be in the air, and Miami's run game yeah. looks spectacular. Yep. I mean, they looked wonderful. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think that's what's going to be interesting. Can Miami's defense kind of do that old school Miami hit them hard? Mm-hmm. You know, get some turnovers, and can their run game continue to just dominate? Yeah. Well, and on the other side of the ball, if if Texas is able to pull out the win, then you've got Texas with more cohesion with better confidence going into a slew, like a gauntlet of crazy tough games ahead of them. I mean, they have to play, they have to play Alabama. They have to play Mm -hmm. UT at UT um, or Tennessee. I'm sorry, Dennis. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying he's just staring me down. Like confuse him. Don't confuse him. The burnt orange people. Um, (laughs) Burnt orange. They have a pain manning and they're pretty high ranked team. Yep. They don't have a Peyton so, Manning. They have uh, a Manning. Uh, excuse me. They have a Manning. <laughs> so you tell me, what is that? What is that? How does that sound like? You have an orange Just, team. You have a Manning, and the team, the team itself, is actually ranked. The other team. It, it is also sounds ranked. like sounds like Texas. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> See, it, I, I, so what? what it sounds UT, like the what UT, UT is currently ranked higher. <laughs> uh, so. I mean, they played Virginia. Like, yeah, which is a power five school versus rice. That's a grain. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, so, <laughs> uh, and listen, Virginia is only down because of, they had a, they had a, they had, they had a legitimate reason to be down last year. Yeah. And, and so they were recovering from that. I mean, I arguably yeah. if they were able to finish out their season, they would have been better than West Virginia. Yes. And, and they would have had a better record than West Virginia and West Virginia uh, I, Penn State did beat West Virginia, but not m- by the same margin that Tennessee beat Virginia mm-hmm. by. But people are lauding Penn State's performance, whereas they're not really lauding Tennessee's performance. And I'm not saying that they should laud Tennessee's performance because, again, we basically saw probably the first first page of the playbook for, yeah. for Tennessee's I offense. I hope it's just the first page because uh, I, I, I was that, very concerned. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just the first page of the playbook there. All of that to say Texas A&M and Miami. Yeah, let's get <laughs> back to Michael, Texas A&M. Yeah, it's <laughs> Michael's game of the week. Yeah, it's my game of the week. Uh, yeah, because that's... You had to bring in uh, Tennessee into a Miami game. <laughs> well, I, no, I think you did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, he said UT. I just, I looked at me and he had to correct it. <laughs> yeah, just had to, re- yeah, you had to correct me. Anyways, <laughs> but I, I just think that Texas A&M, because because of how tough their schedule is, if they're able to secure a win against a, mm-hmm. a up and coming Miami team that very easily mm-hmm. could be contending for the ACC, especially since it looks like Clemson's not going to have a good year, um, it really could. I'm still, I'm still keeping Louisville. I'm just saying the dark horse. <laughs> I, fair enough. They also have the easiest schedule in the ACC. Yeah. So uh, we're in the ACC. What do you expect? <laughs> well, I'm just saying they don't have to play FSU and the Clemson, and you know they don't like. Their their schedule is Isn't just that how Notre Dame gets away. I, clearly, <laughs> I'm just saying it's so Notre, it can work for that too. Notre Dame just is the just is the new uh, Louisville, um, or it's the old Louisville. Um, what am I thinking? I'm not saying the right things. Louisville is <laughs> not nah, whatever. Um, we're moving on yeah. uh, to uh, just, uh, before we wrap up. We got uh, we got Dennis. You got your the your game of the week. I really feel it's like the game of the week, not just mine. Because you guys' pick sucks, I'm not going to lie. But um, I feel like all the attention, other than probably Texas and Bama, is going to be on Colorado and Nebraska. I strongly believe that. You mean That's Colorado? Fair. Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Not Colorado and Nebraska. It's going to be on Colorado. Oh, yeah. So they're just going to be watching Coach Prime. Right. Exactly. Like, that's where you can see Matt Rules is, I feel like, he's going to lose. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a must win for, for him and Nebraska. Yeah. But I feel like the talent level that Colorado, for one, has... And the hype that's kind of coming into week two 
where Coach Prime has to prove it wasn't a fluke beating TCU. Mm-hmm. This is a tone. And so that this has to be a must win game. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, like you said, it's a must yeah. win on both sides of the ball. I mean, you got Matt rule. This is his second game. He, as we discussed earlier, <laughs> he imploded. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, so it's just kind of one of those, like, okay, now you're going from this kind of devastating loss mm-hmm. to you've got one of the hottest teams in the country mm-hmm. that you're about to play. Yep. And what are you going to do? How are you going to get your guys back up? How are you going to yep. pick them up and say, Hey, move on to the next, mm-hmm. um, what are, you, what are you going to do? So for Matt Rule, yeah, you, there's a lot of work to do. Um, and then for, for Prime, like you said, for, for Optimus, it is proving it's not yeah. a fluke. Proving that, like, hey, no, we're here, and this is how we're going to play, and we're going to start winning these games, and we're going to be the team to beat. No, I, and I agree. I think, I think Colorado, again, I, I still stick with my original assessment that a Colorado is probably not going to make a bowl. They're probably still going to – only win three or four games um, just because, you know, if I'm wrong, I have to just eat my words. I'll, I'll eat some humble pie later this year. Um, that's fine. Um, you know, and I, again, we're all going to eat a humble pie later this year for sure. But I already did with my upset. Y- yeah, you did. Um, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll have to like bake a pie and then we'll just, everyone has there to eat go. a slice of pie. Free. Um, I'm uh, not dealing with that in the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, Dennis. I'm gonna have the worst season then. <laughs> Dennis and his white people problems. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, but I I just yeah. I I think I think that Colorado still has the ability to really show up and show out and and especially beat Nebraska. Yeah, you know, there. I feel like at this point, then Colorado would be kicking them while they're down. You're but right. uh, but I think I think. Colorado is going to be riding that high until yeah. they have to play a game like USC or Oregon or things like that. And that's actually, I believe, the week four. They're going to play Oregon first. And that's why I believe, and I, I was telling you, Luke, yep. right outside, I feel like they, they, they could win the first three games. Yeah. But as soon as they play Oregon and USC, they might at best, I feel like, go be able to split them. Mm. But I, I just don't see I, going forward. It'll be interesting to see how Colorado responds to the adversity of losing a game. Yeah. Because right now they're riding a high. So... Um, How long is that high going to last? Exactly. I mean, I mean, you in Denver. Well, <laughs> well, they're in Boulder. It's true. It's Boulder. Oh, sorry. Excuse it's me. You're in Colorado still. You're still in Colorado. That's true. And there's two different kinds of highs I mean, in, in that right. in that state. Fun so. fact. <laughs> fun fact. The city of Boulder is what they they uh, built or based the show South Park off of. I just think of SpongeBob. So. But it's this Boulder. <laughs> I th- see when I sit, when I hear Boulder, I think a uh, donkey from Shrek. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So one's a I jackass. Like that, I like that boulder. <laughs> one South Park. I like that boulder. <laughs> boulder. Uh, all right. Well, again, thanks again for joining us this week for uh, our tailgate. And I hope you come back next week and uh, just listen to us recap week two and look forward to week three. 